Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I want to show you some amazing tricks on how to edit color photos into different black and white styles and also show you my newest black and white super styles creative pack. Here's a little teaser. Boom! <music> And we're back in Affinity Photo and I want to say I'm so happy I can create something amazing for you every month to play with, to be creative with, to use as your artistic toolbox and just create really, really cool stuff. So I want to show you first how this creative pack works and then show you the best tricks that I have used to create that pack. All right, so this is very, very easy to use and very accessible because again, it is an affinity photo file with a lot of different adjustment layers here and you can now combine them freely into hundreds and thousands of different black and white styles. So this is how that works. Let's turn all of these off so you're seeing that the original underlying picture is actually a color photo and this is also how it works. You just pull your photo in here and set it to the lowest layer here and then I have numbered these groups and adjustment layers so you know in which order to take them. So the first two are just basic adjustments. So the first one is just a, a basic black and white adjustment. The reason for that is because every color photo is a little bit different. So you use these sliders and this is also what I would adjust or suggest to you when you do your own adjustments even without the pack. So set this up. You can see these sliders define what color will have what brightness in the black and white output. This is why it is important to set this up first so you have a base from which you can work, right? Okay, test out all of these sliders to see what kind of effect they have. If you're happy with that, you can close that. Then I made for, me, for you three other basic adjustments. This is a curve adjustment. In this case, I show you different kind of tricks as suggestions. So for example, this makes the picture a little bit more flat. Um, you see that this doesn't have any influence right now and this is because the group is turned off. So you have to make a hook here and then I will unhook these two so we can just see what this is doing. And you can see here, what this is doing is it just makes it a little bit flatter so I have more how can I say more even values in there to apply the rest of my adjustments. This is also a good trick to make an image a little bit flatter and then apply the colors and effects and stuff to your black and white output, right? The next one I have created is a brightness and contrast adjustment, which is very easy to use because everybody understands brightness and contrast. You just use these sliders to move them around and you can see with this, I compressed it again a little bit to get this more modern compressed um, and higher contrast look. And you might think, well, you made it flat first, then added some contrast again. Well, look at this. This is the original and this is after these two adjustments. So this actually isn't the same look it's different and then I just created a basic vignette you can use on that to have this kind of more vintage classic black and white look right okay let's go to the next one and these this is the big this is the meat of uh, this creative pack you can see here this is the pro version there's a ton of different gradient maps here all of them are based on classic historic black and white looks that I've created for you to have sampled for you from different and actual classic black and white photos. So you can see when I click on them, for example, we get different styles. You just turn them on and off. Of course, I have to make a hook here next to my vintage black and white styles. And then by just 
turning them on and off, you can go basically through time. Let's zoom in here a little bit so you see a little bit better what is going on. You can just go through the time of what happened in black and white. So this is a modern blue and gray look. And here, for example, we also have art styles, for example, art style red, which makes it red and sepia in the background a little bit. So this is more of an intense artistic style that you can have. Another thing here is, for example, these classic, for example, classic gray, which is more soft and also limits how bright the whitest parts of that can be. So that's also a very nice, softer, classic look you find in older artworks, for example, that are black and white photos often. Then, of course, we have different um, sepia styles in here. For example, this is one of our community members in my Facebook fan group. She's called Rubak. So I created one of these gradient maps after her, after one photo she posted of course i asked her if i can use that she, she said yes so it's all good so this is her sepia style but there's also for example from the 1900s a sepia style more pink we have one from the 1920s different look here more beige uh, from the color and also we have cyanotypes which is when it goes from blue to white this is a classic um, technique in photography more of an art style you also know it from architecture copies of these plants you know they have been uh, blue and white to all technique of making copies of something so pretty interesting um, and you have their different cyanotypes in here for example. Um, let's stay with this classic gray here for a moment. And here is some other cool stuff I created for you. I don't want to spend too much time on that. I created different styles of vignettes. I will leave that out for the moment. Um, I created, a, here's a one button glamour glow. So you can see this instantly makes the image a little bit softer, creates a little bit of glow around the edges and objects. Very soft, by the way. Here is different contrast styles, also very nice. You have an old magazine style I set up for you. Uh, we have to turn this on again, like so. So you can see and um, overexposed style, a washed out style, also nice, classic look. Uh, for black and white photos so i really researched old black and white photos how do they degrade how do they look what what ways have they be processed and created that as the pack so it's pretty interesting this is a pumped style here as you can see high contrast you can turn off the vignette or make it less dark if you want to so this isn't set in stone all of these things are non-destructive and up here we have different blurs and here's something really cool look at that uh wait a second I will turn off the um, I will turn off the vignette down here so we have a better look at that. Look at this. I made a tilt motion blur. Tilt shift and motion blur at the same time. And the way I created this is just a motion blur with a with a mask on it. That's how easy that is. And I have the same thing for a radial blur. Look how cool that looks. That's a radial blur with a mask on it, with a gradient on it. And by the way, I have to say, this pack is so great for uh, portrait photography, for street photography, for city photography, for architecture photography, for art photography, for all these kind of styles. Really great to have different kind of black and white styles. And the last thing before we start the tutorial is the luminance. There's just so much stuff in here. Oh, and I also created overlay. So pff, I really went overboard with this one. Uh, let's turn on the vignette again. And you can see that this is luminance noise actually so this goes where you have more noise in the dark areas and less noise in the bright areas and if we look here in that area for example you can see less noise here more noise there pretty cool right i will show you how it works but uh one more <laughs> one more thing i mean there's just so much good stuff in here um when we go to file and place and we select our um overlays i have created different folders here you have dirt that you can overlay you have different types of spots that you can overlay and you have even these stripes that you can overlay and the easy way you do that is is very very easy is um, just um, open one like double click and then click here to put it here make sure it's the highest layer in there and just resize it over the picture and if you want you can use different kind of blend modes to have different effects and um 
by the way, also really important. I have again included an online course that shows you all of this in detail, almost half an hour long, where you get all this explained step by step on how it works. All right. So now I want to show you the two best tricks that I used to create this pack. Look at that. The way I create these classic styles is by using gradient maps. So the important part here is that you first turn it into black and white with your black and white adjustment and then do some adjustments here because this is highly influencing how the gradient maps works because as you can imagine a gradient map goes from the darkest value to the brightest value and applies the color or uh, the gradient that you find in here depending on how bright or dark the areas of the image are so depending on what you set up here with the curve with the brightness with the contrast with the vignette the result will look different so have a look at that for example if i turn this on and you can see now if i turn my vignette off i don't have this here because this is now not dark it's bright so this will be in that kind of sepia style but if i turn my vignette on i have this here so this is why that is so important for that if you create your own black and white styles look out for that it's a really really important part of that and the other part is to use a gradient map because they work really really great on black and white pictures because black and white pictures are nothing else than brightness difference you go from black to white as a map basically that's your picture and then you apply these color values to that uh, so a gradient map is really really great uh, to create all these different styles look at here sepia and um, all this kind of um, here you have a vintage basic sepia for example also different and here's another important part um, you can see here that um, wait a second, I'm not here, I'm here. Um, the This gradient map influences the brightest parts and also the darkest parts because this basically replaces the colors in the image with the colors in the gradient map. So if I make this a medium beige tone that's not completely bright, this means that my bright areas will also have this kind of medium beige tone. And if I would change, for example, the darkness here to a lighter gray tone, also all the dark areas in my pictures would have that lighter gray tone. So it couldn't get completely dark or completely bright. And this helps you to create a really amazing looks right and of course for example uh, the rupak sepia is a little bit more complex it has three different values in here so you can see you also can do that so it goes from a dark dark violet to a more how would you say a brownish red tone and then it goes to a more yellow beige tone really interesting and I really I really want to invite you to play around with black and white styles with the sepia styles with the xenotype styles and the art styles all these kind of things um, because you learn so much about pictures how they are edited, how the different art styles work, and compare that, compare that actually to classic artistic photography from famous photographers and see the different values because then you also develop an eye for black and white photography and how it's not just black and white, it's a huge difference between all of these kind of different styles. Okay, and then I also want to show you how I created the luminance noise um let's go something here again with our classic gray so the image gets a little bit darker and uh, what you can see here is i have more noise in darker areas and the way i do that is i have a normal noise like this this is nothing else but a normal noise so this is really tricky how i uh, created that and um, the way I do that is I set the noise to soft light. So it creates this kind of um, rough um, ISO noise in the picture. And then you go here to the blend ranges and use the underlying composition ranges. This means the different brightness values that you get from everything that's below that layer. And so you can set up to say, okay, I wanna have less visibility. I wanna have less opacity of that layer 
everywhere where the image is brighter and I want to have more of that everywhere where the picture is darker. So you can move this also up. So for you can see if I move this up I get even more of this noise in my darker areas. Of course I didn't want to have too much. I wanted to have to I wanted to be realistic, look nice and not to interfere too much with the image. So I set it to a lower value, but this is how you create luminance noise and this is really nice. So apply the trick, play around with it. You can even invert it to make the lighter areas noisier and the darker areas cleaner. There's a lot of possibilities in there. Well, these are my two best tricks. Make use of them, have fun with them and check out my pack because of course, as always, there is a free version. Thank you very much for watching and see you in my next tutorial. Thank you. Bye.